You're listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. We're going to be speaking with returning guest, Dr. Jorge Gomez. He's joining us here as Medical Director, Thoriasic Oncology Program and World Trade Center Oncology Clinic, Mount Sinai, on behalf of Pfizer and the American Lung Association to share some information about pneumococcal pneumonia. Welcome back to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Gomez. Thank you so much for returning. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I mentioned your role there at uh, World Trade Center Oncology. Give us a bit of your professional background for those uh, who may not be familiar with you as a contributor. Of course. I'm a thoracic medical oncologist, so I basically see patients who have lung cancer at uh, Mount Sinai Hospital at the Icon School of Medicine in New York City. And uh, what is your current role with the American Lung Association? I mentioned also that you're, on, that you're here on behalf of Pfizer and the American Lung Association. I'm a volunteer spokesperson for the American Lung Association. I support them um, in any of their endeavors related to lung cancer or related to lung health. Now, we're going to be speaking about pneumococcal pneumonia. What is pneumococcal pneumonia? How does it differ from other types of pneumonia? And talk a little bit about some of the signs and symptoms, if you would. So pneumococcal pneumonia is a serious bacterial lung infection. Um, It can really disrupt your life for weeks sometimes. In severe cases, it can even put you in the hospital and be life-threatening. It's the most common type of bacterial pneumonia. It's caused by a bacteria called Streptococcus pneumoniae, and that's how it differs from other types of pneumonia. There are other types of pneumonia that are caused by other bacteria or even viral pneumonia, and so this one is specific to this bacteria. Um, When it happens, it can really cause the lungs to become severely inflamed and occasionally fill up with mucus. And some of the symptoms, or the most common symptoms, are fever, sweating, chills, cough, difficulty breathing, and occasionally chest pain. Some of these symptoms um, can be very severe and can often last for weeks or even longer. Is everyone at risk or are there certain age groups uh, that are more at risk than others? Uh, Of course, I would assume that people that have comorbidities would be at risk. Yeah, so everyone is really at risk, but there are certain populations who are at higher risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. One of the most important is age. You know, as as we age, the immune system starts to weaken Mm -hmm. and we are much more open to potentially serious infections like pneumococcal pneumonia. So it's been found that adults age 65 or older are over 10 times more likely to be hospitalized with pneumococcal pneumonia than adults between the ages of 18 and 49. There are other factors that are important. Um, It's also been seen that there are certain chronic conditions like COPD, asthma, chronic heart disease, diabetes, and smoking, which can also significantly increase the risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. Since those health conditions are are prominent in Latino and African Americans, um, asthma and diabetes compared to white Americans, those increase the risk for pneumococcal pneumonia greater in those populations. So what can those in that population uh, do to lessen their risk of contracting pneumococcal pneumonia? The most important thing that people can do to lessen the risk of pneumococcal pneumonia is talk to their health care provider about the risk and about the possibility of pneumococcal vaccination. So everyone who's at risk, either age 65 or older, uh, or who have those underlying chronic conditions like COPD, asthma, chronic heart disease, diabetes, or smokers, should talk to their doctors and talk about pneumococcal vaccination. And that's been around for a long time. So normally, uh, what is the treatment landscape once you realize or have been diagnosed with this type of pneumonia? Well, if you have this type of pneumonia, it can also it can be treated fairly easily with antibiotics, and these pneumonias respond very well to antibiotics. The issue is that patients with chronic uh, health issues are more likely to have severe side effects, severe symptoms from the disease, and even be hospitalized. So it's better to prevent the pneumonia than to treat it. Now, obviously, uh, this is easily spread. Uh, is it spread in you know, the most common way through uh, coughs and, and sneezes, or is it something that can be uh, picked up by touch? It's, it's most commonly spread by respiratory uh, ways. So mm-hmm. being in, with a person who has pneumococcal pneumonia, who is coughing, sneezing, 
and putting out droplets with the bacteria. I, I was wondering, are there ever instances or is it possible that a person could get pneumococcal pneumonia? Uh, they're out for a couple, three days uh, and then it runs its course and they're OK without medication or hospitalization. It is possible. Yes, there are patients who may have mild pneumonia that may resolve spontaneously. But that's not that's not the norm. No, in general, these patients are a bit sicker than some of the other pneumonias, mm -hmm. and so they generally need antibiotics. Is there anything that else that you'd like to share for our listeners concerning pneumococcal pneumonia? And then, if you would, give us a website where we can learn more. Yeah, so I think that's the most important thing. The, 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 the most important thing to remember is that pneumococcal pneumonia can, in some cases, be prevented. You can talk to your health care provider, your physician, a pharmacist, and there is significant amount of information at the website lung.org slash pneumococcal. There's actually a risk assessment that you can take, a few questions, and, and it will give you uh, an answer of whether or not you have a high risk of having pneumococcal pneumonia or being hospitalized for pneumococcal pneumonia. Well, Jorge, always a pleasure. I thank you for joining us here on Health Professional Radio for this segment. Looking forward to our next conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with returning guest, Dr. Jorge Gomez. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com health professional radio.